friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on October 7th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet, and welcome to The Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well as a look at earthquakes, volcanoes, and world weather. Checking out here the last 48 hours of imagery on our sun, 304 angstroms, a little glitch there in the imagery, some calibration going on with the satellites. We do have a pretty large sunspot region, Earth facing right now. Looking at the last 48 hours incoming, you can see it on the right hand side. A lot of complexity within those sunspot regions. There's about three of them, I do believe. We also just had a CME take off from the backside of the sun in a cresting view. And as well, we had that large plasma filament just took off there, southern hemisphere. A few plasma ropes to talk about creating massive what looked to be like solar tornadoes but definitely in the last few images saw a small collapse in the sunspot region that it was leaving looking at multi-spectrum here amazing imagery I, just, I apologize for those little calibration glitches not much I can do about that having a look at a different light and we can see the coronal holes here which are the darkened regions on the sun but we have an earth facing big com complex sunspot region to talk about which could release some pretty sizable flares so heads up stay aware prepared with daily events worldwide quick look there at that little tornado plasma tornado and a quick look at the sunspot regions, just showing the alpha and delta. You can see the blue and the red, that's when they start mixing, it's when we get some flares. Solar X-ray flux just jumped up. We did have a sizable C-class flare as it's been hovering in the C-class range. Geomagnetic activity is elevated, KP4. Solar winds, we're sitting at about 500 kilometers per second. Jumped up to about 578 there, just over the last little bit. Space weather penetration started pretty much last night and is continuing on now. Looking at our geospace mag magnetosphere, showing the action of our magnetosphere and the effects of the solar winds. Ramped up there to almost 600 kilometers per second. Looking at the geospace magnetosphere cut planes, and this shows the pressure. Pressure on our magnetosphere. See it bouncing, reverberating there. That big yellow arc in that red pressure region. Midnight. Having a look at the ISWA space prediction spiral. There's our backside solar flare I was talking about. And there is another one showing just recently today. And it's set to give us a glancing blow, probably 13th into the 14th. Definitely got something coming. Heads up. Schumann resonance for today is a power of seven. Now this is Earth's energy and hum frequency. Amplitude of seven, quality of 6.7, power of four. Frequency minimum 7.71. Now let's get to earthquakes here. The past 24 hours has been semi-busy. We're sitting at about 250 earthquakes across the USGS map. We're going to start out here with the largest. It was a 5.5 here in Hai Hai Fo, Tonga region. As well a 4.9 ringing out there, Tonga. A couple deep earthquakes ahead of that. 4.9, 543 kilometer depth late last night and as well a 4.3, 500 kilometer depth. So ex still expecting larger earthquakes here. Quiet, eerily quiet in between Indonesia and Tonga right now. So heads up Philippines, Eastern Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, Solomon Islands, earthquake warning. It's been too quiet through the region. 5.3 there to report in Nago, Japan, as well Iwaki, Japan, 4.5. A lot of activity heading through Alaska this week, or the last 48 hours as well. Glacier view 
Alaska. 4.1 earthquake, 28 kilometer depth, as well a 4.0, 3.5 here. St. Lawrence Island, Alaska. And Gamble, Alaska. 4.1 there, Nikolskoy, Alaska. So the Aleutian Islands seeing some activity. Watch for some volcanic activity to come in the next few days. Notable earthquake here, 4.4, largest across North American plate, Lacombe, Oregon. And a couple people in the live stream yesterday, or this morning said they felt that and they were in the stream while we, they were feeling it. Having a look here across the U.S., minor activity continues through Oklahoma and Menton, Texas. Not too much to talk about through California, only recording about 80 earthquakes across the whole state. Quiet Hawaii, increasing action here through Puerto Rico today. This is all today. Very quiet South American plate, Chile 4.5. But go back 48 hours here and we had a 5.8 on the 7th. Huangala, Peru. So strange places for earthquakes right now, as I report on earthquakes every day, not your regular earthquakes, and it's quiet, according to this USGS, but we also want to mix in here ESMC earthquakes, and showing a lot of activity through Greece up into Turkey, and as well the Strait of Gibraltar. Quick look around the world, that's the last 24 hours, according to ESMC. Also wanted to note here all of the activity up into the Pacific Northwest. Minor earthquakes occurring at St. Helens and as well Rainier. And even northward up into Baker. Weird explosions being reported across the Pacific Northwest. The pressure is on, people. And this is what space weather does to our planet. It creates a lot of pressure on our tectonic plates and our magnetic field, all connected. Also wanted to note here the tremor map across the Pacific Northwest right now. Look at that, Oregon in the middle, California on the right, Washington on the left. Looking at about 500 tremors. Now let's get to a 48 hour period. The two days we've seen over 1200 tremors across the whole coast, especially into Oregon and Washington. So a lot of magma moving underneath there. Have a look at the Pacific Disaster Center showing the most recent satellite imagery and the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Large atmospheric river stretching across the Atlantic right now. We've got the White Island volcano in New Zealand that has awakened. They raised the alert level a couple weeks ago. Sangay in Ecuador, Popo Pacatatol in Mexico, Nevadas de Ruiz, Colombia, Sabincaya, Peru, Fuego in Guatemala. And look at all these fires. Wow. Most of them are through uh, Africa and South America. Nishinishima still erupting, creating massive cloud of debris and ash across the Pacific. We do have Tropical Depression 12, which is alive, but not forecasted to turn into anything serious. And there's another Tropical Depression, of course, heading into parts of Guatemala right now. Tropical Storm, Tropical Storm Julia is alive and most likely will be a Category 3 as it makes landfall. Across the rest of the world, one other tropical storm to talk about, and that's in the South Indian Ocean, Tropical Cyclone 3, not named yet. And just look at across this map right now, we're sitting at 260 for hazards across the world, and a lot of them are floods and fires. Look at all these floods right across the world. Our world is going crazy right now and I'm, people are going crazy and I just, I love you guys and I, I really appreciate you all tuning in, but there's a lot going on on our planet right now and it seems to be getting worse. So stay tuned to Daily Events Worldwide. I'll keep you aware and prepared as best I can. 
Look at all the fires. South America as well. A lot of these are man-made as they are trying to build agricultural land. Even into Bolivia. Fires up north in Canada still too. Fort Smith, Alberta. Northwest Territories. Mackenzie, British Columbia. Washington, Washington. And of course, BC. This is the Pacific Disaster app. You can download this yourself, even check it all out, or you can get an update here with daily events worldwide, looking at many drought conditions across the Pacific Northwest, and now swarming tremor conditions. Have a quick look here at our upper level winds, 10,000 feet. This is our northern hemisphere right now. The North Pole polar vortex is setting up. We've got some pretty strong winds there just on one side of our magnetic north. And it looks like we've got a huge high pressure ridge built in right there. Things are really setting up. Cold conditions and snow are forecast for Canada. Having a look at the southern hemisphere versus the northern. Watch for this to break down over the next couple weeks. And you're going to see the same thing in the north. But our jet streams are wonky. Atmospheric compression events. Look at all this moisture on the precipital uh, water map. This is the rain forecast for the world. Big convergence line heading into Ontario Thursday into Friday and then watch for snow to move in for next weekend. Massive low, low pressure system in the Pacific will align itself with Alaska in the long range and as well a big low heading across the Bering Strait into the Hudson Bay and that's going to bring a lot of snow towards Manitoba, Northern Ontario, and Quebec in the long range forecast, even parts of Northern Saskatchewan. Quick look around here, the rest of the world for rain forecast. Australia, rain is moving away and you're gonna be drying out for the next few days, except for coastal regions in the North. And then watch for rain to return to Southeastern parts, Victoria, Wednesday into Thursday. No major tropical systems forecast here, except for a possible one there developing South China Sea. Big player is going to be the big low heading through the Atlantic. United Kingdom has got a rain train on the way. Atmospheric river of moisture and one, two, three low pressure systems in the long range. And as well, quite possibly a Mediterranean hurricane developing here. Stay aware, prepared. Much love, everybody. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. And thank you for smashing that like button. Stay aware, prepared. Stay young and have fun. And get your daily due. Bye-bye now. Please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.